What probably surprised us the most was the findings in this general population that showed that the illicit drugs were much, much often, and also the tendency to, to do some small, uh, what are called criminal things like stealing and so on. Fellow Homo sapiens, did you know that seizures are just one symptom of epilepsy? Well, this week we have epileptologist Morten Engbalosius, lead of the National Centre for Epilepsy in Norway, talk about how crucial it is for people to recognise that things like depression, anxiety and even risk-taking behaviours can all be part of the epilepsies. Morten also shares with us his epilepsy research as lead of the Beyond Seizures team at EpiCare. My name is Morten Engvalosius and I'm an adult neurologist and uh... We like to call ourselves epileptologists because we work with only patients with epilepsy. I, um, I also have been working with kids and, and the elderly. So, um, and I'm also head of the research at our center, which is the National Center for Epilepsy in Norway. And uh, patients are referred from all over Norway to our center. And we're also an Epicare center, uh, the center for uh, rare and complex epilepsies. And that's how we met, actually, wasn't it? Tell us about the new team that you're involved with at Epicare. I started a team called Beyond Seizures, um, and it's primarily meant for patients with difficult-to-treat epilepsies. Uh, we start with adolescents and adults, and, and, and those with normal intellectual function, and not those with deficits or those with very severe monogenic epilepsy, we'll, we'll, we'll come to them as well, but we'd like to start with all these different issues that an ordinary epilepsy patients with a difficult to treat epilepsy are struggling with every day. So like depression, anxiety and other psychosocial issues that uh, are can be in many cases as important as the seizures. Tell us about your work and your research into the psychosocial impacts of the epilepsy. I feel that this is often not, I think I just made a term up in my head, uh, under addressed, but it's not addressed sufficiently in many cases. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah. So this is really important. Yeah, I agree with you, it's, it's, it's under addressed. Actually, I started out with some totally different things. I, I did a randomized controlled trial on uh, anti-seizure medication withdrawal, but um, but it's not that different anyway, because many of the drugs have side effects that could increase the burden of, of, of other uh, morbidities like depression and anxiety and so on. So when I came to this center, I, 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 I started this research group and one of my first PhD students did a study on adolescent, children and adolescent, both at our center and, and also in the general population. And, and what we found was that the the frequency of depression and anxiety and also risk-taking behavior, the use of uh, uh, drugs and narcotics and alcohol were much, much higher among uh, adults with uh, epilepsy compared to those without. So it's not just a problem for those with, with um, difficult to treat epilepsies, but in general, it's a problem for probably for all patients with epilepsy. Findings are all, always at the group level. So of course there are many that uh, don't have these problems, but um, I think it's, we could say that around 50% of adolescents with epilepsy have, have other, we used to call it comorbidities, but I think we should rather call it morbidities because it's a brain disease and, and it's probably, um, the brain, if you have a disease in the brain, you might have epilepsy, but you are also likely to have other diseases like emotional problems and, and, and other things. I guess key point being that epilepsy is not just seizures, right? It's like so many other things because it's all of the same organ and they often come together, these different symptoms, right? And the seizures are a symptom of the epilepsy, correct? Yeah, and you even have syndromes like the juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, which is not rare and it's probably not that complex and, and it's easy to treat and the patients get seizure free but very many of them have cognitive problems challenges especially the cognitive function that are linked to the frontal lobe you're talking about um children with juvenile myoclonic epilepsy and how their seizures are just one aspect of the epilepsy exactly uh, and we saw that, and others, of course, have shown that these patients might have um, dysfunction in their frontal lobe, which can be um, quite a challenge for, um, especially for a young person during education and, and work. And as, as I said, many of these patients 
have quite good seizure control. Many of them are seizure free, but they still have a lot of changes uh, during their lifetime. And they, and I guess, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but often um, in both children and adults, these uh, illnesses and accompanying the seizures um, can impact families as well as the individual. And yeah, of course they can. And, 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 and uh, if you go to the psychosocial issues, there, there is a couple from Nova Scotia in the, in Canada, who have followed the cohort for 30, 40 years, and, and, and what yeah, that was for, for patients with IgEs or mostly juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, and they show that they are more often alone, they have, have less often family, they are out of work in a much higher degree than than the controls. So, and of course, um, having a um, a husband or a wife with epilepsy also having a, a depression and anxiety so anxiety is of course a, a challenge uh, that adds to the epilepsy so to say so um, it's very important to have focus on this and and to do screening uh, so we actually did a, um, a survey in the epicare among the epicare centers to to find out what kind of questionnaires the different centers were using and we found out that the difference was was quite high and, and some centers did not use them on a regular regular, regular basis sorry that's okay oh, on a regular basis yeah they should at least uh, some of the, these questionnaires because they um they are in many ways they can be better than just talking to the physician or, or the nurse uh, if you have to answer two questions to you detect often um, these problems and symptoms better. So, so, so this is actually how uh, we more or less started this working group 18, which is called Beyond Seizures. And, and, and the plan now is to, to do a pilot study uh, using the most common questionnaires like the um, adverse event profile questionnaire and and the NDI uh, depression questionnaire and, and, and some others and try to see whether it actually helps the patient. Of course, we will find more patients with these problems, but um, at the end of the day, uh, the important thing is that the patient has an improvement in their quality of life. And that's, that's what we're going, trying to do and trying to show. And if we manage, we will try to implement um, a set of questionnaires in the difference in all the <laughs> different epicare centers. That's our ambition, at least. Because it's important to identify needs and um and illnesses, but also you have to be able to help the individual that you identify as having these challenges, right? Yeah, we have to have some consequences, not just finding out, but also, to, <laughs> and, and that might be someone else that um, sort of like the psychiatrists or, or the psychologists that might help us or help them with, with these issues. What are some of the key discoveries that you've made when it comes to researching the psychosocial issues of young people and adults with an epilepsy? Because these are often overlooked, I believe, and, and which is crazy when you think that sometimes these psychosocial issues can make a person more likely to have seizures. You should circle, of course, it's go, go both ways. It's a bidirectional the function there so yeah that's quite correct if you have if you are depressed you're more li likely to have seizures and if you have seizures you're more likely to have uh, depression so so what probably surprised us the most was the findings in this general population that show that as i said in the beginning the use of illicit drugs were much much often and also the tendency to to do some small yeah, what are called criminal things like stealing and so on of course, the numbers were low, but they were much, much higher in the epilepsy group compared to the controls. And we also found differences in um, sexual behavior. They had a one year earlier sexual debut. That's uh, normally not a very good thing if you're too early. Uh, and, uh, and we also found that the epilepsy boys, they were not very good at using uh, using contraceptives, uh, measures like condoms and so on. So. So it's all over. I mean, it's all kinds of um, sort of psychosocial um, challenges or or findings. So that surprised us a lot. Um, but we have also done studies within our, our patients at this center, and they have, of course, a much much higher degree of of, of uh, emotional problems, especially emotional problems like depression and, and anxiety, um, and also this risk-taking behavior. That 
can be linked to the ADHD, which is also much more frequent in, in patients with epilepsy. Th things like anxiety, depression, ADHD, is it, have you been able to identify if these are present um, with the seizures alone or are they a side effect of medications or is it social impacts or does it all come together? It's an excellent question. Uh, and I, if, you, if we start with the emotional problems, I think <laughs> everything is sort of interconnected. And, and there are also data showing that the people have their depression before their epilepsy. Uh, and some get the depression after the epilepsy and it's, um, it can be sort of the organic brain disease that causes it and it probably okay. is, but it can be increased by all the psychosocial things, all the, the fear of seizures and, and, and the isolation and that many uh, feel uh, and experience and, and maybe overprotection uh, by parents. And a lot of things that it all adds together, uh, you know, so it, you can't say that it's just one thing. It's, it's uh, some of all the sort of negative um, things that you might experience. But then it's, again, it's important to start with something. If you treat the depression or if you yeah. at least find the depression, try to do something about it, uh, there is an anxiety or, or depression, this might also help. As you said, yeah, have a knock on effect. You have to sort of stop this uh, evil circle. Thank you to Morton for such insight as life as a person with an epilepsy. In next week's episode, Morton takes our conversation further, providing recommendations regarding appointments for clinicians and the person with the epilepsy, talking about drug side effects, precision medicine, and improved access to care.